Thank you. It's a scary thought to talk about something I do not usually talk about. Most of the time, when I face an audience, I see the scare is on the other side. <laughs> the reason for me to be doubly scared is, unlike Crispian, I got a call only yesterday afternoon. I suspected that someone had let the TEDx team down at the last moment and I am a fill-in. I got even more scared when one of the team members said, Sir, you play the piano so well and can you give us a talk on music, relationship between music and mathematics? Piano? I play well? Yes, sir, we have heard it from your house. I said, that must be Daniel Badenbaum or Piatoslav Richter or somebody else. You heard CDs. I have not been near the keyboard ever since I was a child and one of my aunts played a Tegor song on the piano. That's it. And of course I met my ex and I said, leave me alone. I cannot talk about music because I am not a competent follower of music. I neither do play nor do understand music at all. Then someone hooked me by saying, so what about fractals? We have seen your fractals in the Facebook. I got hooked. Because like everybody else, I too have many passions and fractals and literature, these are two passions about which I am comfortable talking about though I know very little about them. So there we are, we are talking about fractals over here. What is a fractal? How is it linked to the theme today? Infinity. We have seen many people talk about the infinite possibilities in their talks earlier. We know how people talk about infinity in an informal way waves in the ocean, stars in the sky, leaves in the tree, clouds, grains of sand, all of these make us think about infinity. But for mathematics, it's quite a different story altogether. I had my first encounter with infinity when as a boy I was raised as an atheist. Unlike many others who are raised as devotees of some religion or other, in my house the religion was atheism. And I was having this argument with a passionate believer in Genesis, who passionately believed that God created man. No, I said, echoing Darwin's theory that man was not created by God, he descended from monkeys and monkeys descended from, and so on down the biological ladder, Soon I was down to unicellular orgasm and then said, who made this? Only later on, I came to the notion, popularized by Barton Russell, that this is actually one of the proofs of God's existence, the unmoved mover, the unmade maker. And he said, there need not be a first term in an infinite series. And that is the definition of infinite series for mathematicians, Every number has a next number, has a previous number. So that's how we mathematicians view infinity. We can also view infinity in microcosms. Here, I'm holding a glass of water and it's translucent, light seeps through it. We see myriad versions of different light fragments. I drop the glass, breaks into various fragments. Some of these fragments look similar to the original glass itself. What is it but infinity? Parts of the tree looks similar to the tree itself, the whole structure. Some of the cloudlets look like the entire configuration of clouds. So there we have one of the key notions of fractals and infinity. The notion of self-similarity. Not self-identity, but self-similarity. If I may use an analogy, it's like a person carrying a book. The cover of the book is on display. And in that you see 
the same person carrying a book and so on and so forth in infinite regress. The only thing is, some things are not the same. If you zoom on the first book, you may see the color of the cover of the second book is different from that of the first book. Maybe the man's beard is not skewed to the left, but to the right. So we are talking about self-similarity over here and not self-identity. The word fractal itself was coined by a mathematician, Benoit Mandelbrot. He used it because for him it meant a broken line, broken in many fragments. Think of a shoreline of a country, Great Britain or a state, West Bengal, broken into many fragments. You zoom on part of the fragments, it looks like the same shoreline expanded. Maybe a little different here and there, but not much. Can we generate this, where with infinite zooming, we can get greater and greater details, amazing detail of wealth. And some of this detail, uncannily looks familiar to us because we have encountered them in the overall picture. Yes, we can. How can we? This is the procedure, he said. Incidentally, I am supposed to stay away from mathematics during this discourse. That's something like making an omelette without breaking an egg. When you try to describe fractals without mathematics. How can you make an omelette without breaking an egg? Well, you stare at the egg and someone from the local shop brings the omelet to you. And that's what we are going to do. I am going to wave my hands and talk about fractals in a meaningful manner and will show you what these fractals are by displaying some eye candy. Now, as I was saying, Mandelbrot did the following. Before we have the next one, uh, how did he do this? He took a point in the space and used some transformation on the point. All the time trying to see if those points get beyond a circle or not. How many transformations does it take to escape? He colored the point of the pixel by the number of transformations. And that's how he ended up with this amazing design. Another variation of the Mandelbrot is what we are going to see next. This is known as the Julia fractal. Yeah, I think that's true. Now my take on these is what I am going to start with because I fell in love with these and I tried my own coding, I code in C++ to generate something akin to this. Initial start was the same formula that Mandelbrot and Julia used and then I gravitated from that. We can start the slideshow now. I use the same formula as that of Mandelbrot and this is a zoom on the Mandelbrot design. This is a zoom on the Julia design. Gnarl as you know is like a knot in the wood but mine is more symmetric in terms of tantric designs. So this is one of the 
series that I generated using null fractal formula. And now, instead of these colliques, I was more interested in shapes, broad shapes and structures, monochrome designs, using the same concept of null fractals. You suppress something and emphasize the rest, it becomes more interesting that way, not through Photoshop, all through coding. These are pseudo 3D colorings which will make the fractals seem like we are looking at unknown continents floating in sea. Yes, from this one onwards. Yes, this is an experimentation with my own functions. Orbit trap is uh, when you add an additional condition and uh, let the fractal escape before it meets the main escape condition as I had mentioned earlier. So you have these net like structures emanating the main fractal, tendrils and shoots coming out. Not all fractals are self similar. Some are uh, applications which will, from a simple system, try to capture a more dynamic one. These are known as attractors, where one point is iterated again and again, not all points are iterated. And there are three or four equations that dominate this iteration. Strange attractors, which was first done by Lawrence in a butterfly effect. Yes, indeed this fractal was called popcorn fractal by person who had invented it, Pickover. Mine is a kind of talismanic transformation of the same popcorn fractal. Perlin was a special effects genius who had obtained in 1993 an academy award for his work, creating textures that would simulate sky, caves, forest, and this is my take on Parlin noise. And finally, this is where I have reached. Here I am trying to emulate some of the abstract painters. Ah, oh, well, yes. Should I talk about this one? Or are you skipping this? Some trouble with the video. This is the attractor I was talking about. How a few lines can control an entire system. From chaos to order. what I was influenced by when I was in Dubai. 
how Islamic stars and rosettes can be created in a new geometric fashion and how the same can be used for tiling space. Not really a fractal, but part of computer art. And finally, this is where I have reached. You will find futuristic painters, Giacomo Balla or Altamira Caves being emulated in some of these paintings. Not paintings really, all generated by algorithms. Thank you. But for Neha, this would not have been possible. She has helped me enormously. Uh, please give a big hand to her. <laughs> Others are featuring in Facebook. So if you want, you can take a look at this. Fractal is very easy to Google. There are various kinds of fractals. If you want to know more about them, drop me an email. Thank you.